can stand up against to Jesus Christ's judgment at the great white throne. And there is a way to never go to the judgment. And that is I have to have a righteousness that has nothing to do with the way that I live my daily day. I need something to be glued over Toby Whitmer. And this is it. Look at this, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, it comes from God, it's alien to me, it's from him, which is by doing good every moment, never sinning, no, by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The hypocrite in this room who thinks you're pretty good, you must give up every hope of that. You must think about what it will be like when Jesus, at the final day, mentions every sin you've done in secret and realize you can never stand if you're trusting and being pretty good. If you're trusting in that you've compared yourself to others and you're much better than them, you are much better than them. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You can never stand that judgment. And in this passage, here is your answer and hope. It is not your comparison to somebody else or trying to be good. See your secret deeds as offensive and sinful to the holy God. Count yourself in this verse that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do, you do not glorify him. You are not okay. You fall very, 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 very short. You cannot do it with your own religion, your own morality. Your hope must be verse 22 of chapter 3, faith and belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, not on the name, look here, on the fact that he, came, he was the Son of God, the perfect one, who came and lived perfectly the law. Do you know when he said, keep the commandments, that guy never could, he did. He was perfect every moment and every day. He perfectly fulfilled obedience to God. He perfectly fulfilled the law. That made him the one who was worthy to die as a substitution for all of your sins. And this is called imputed righteousness. That means righteousness given to us, not that we earn or not that we, because we're any good. That all that perfect righteousness that Jesus did for 32 years and for billions of years before that was taken off of him and was laid on the account of everyone who will trust that, that cross, that perfectness. And he, God, glues faith in what Jesus Christ did, abandonment of I'm good at all, allows God to glue, shrink wrap, however you want to look at it, the perfection of Jesus Christ over you, so that every time from that point on, after you have taken Jesus' righteousness, that he looks at you, he really just sees himself. You're as perfect and as pure as he is, as Jesus, who is God. But what about all that wickedness? That's what the cross is all about. You traded. And God laid it on Jesus Christ and then bruised him and shed his blood, and turned away his face and gave him hell on that cross Hell! 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 Whose sin? Your sin. Whose righteousness now do I stand in? Jesus' perfection. We've traded. Oh, hypocrite here in the room. You will not stand come judgment day. If you try, verse 16, he will peel off every sin you've ever committed in your entire life. You've got to have alien righteousness that you, don't, you can't muster up. Jesus Christ has got to shrink wrap his righteousness on top of you. And once he does that, you never, ever, ever lose it. It's all of grace. It's a free gift. He gave it to you and he never takes it away. And it has nothing to do with your performance. This is salvation. This is righteousness outside of anything we can do. Would you bow your heads across the auditorium?